Hi, Keith here from Academy of Bass. Today we're going to be looking at something that's going to give you a huge amount of power in terms of the possibilities of using it in your bass lines, but it's also really going to help you broaden your understanding of the neck. And the best thing about it is it's something that you probably already know. <laughs> Hi, I'm going to look at a major chord arpeggio today. Now, if you know this already, sit tight and watch the lesson, please, because I really do think that you're going to be pleasantly surprised. I'm in the key of C, and I'm going to play a root position C major chord arpeggio. So we've got C, E, and G, or root third and fifth. Now, the fingering's really important too, so we've got C with our second finger, E with our first finger, and G with our little finger. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this arpeggio and I'm going to play it in as many places across the neck as I possibly can. So the first thing I'm going to do is pick this pattern or shape up and I'm going to play it here. So I'm at the 8th fret of the E string. And all I'm doing here is simply regurgitating this pattern. But what I'm going to do now is put my musician's cap on and refer back to what we've just learned, which are the notes in the chord C, E and G. And I'm going to superimpose them onto this shape now. So we've got C, E and G. So if this is an area of the neck that you're not used to playing in or you're not familiar with, what we're doing here is reinforcing our understanding of the chord and we're starting to broaden our understanding of the neck. So we've got and the next place we can play it is here. So now we're at the 10th fret of the D string. So we've got C, E, G, C, E, G, and C, E, G. And there's one more place, there's a fourth place, and that's here at the 17th fret of the A string. So we've got C, E, G. So now we've got one, two, three, and four positions. And the first position, means that we've got virtually every note in the chord of C within the first five frets. And you'll notice that I said virtually, but more on that in a minute. The second two means that we've now got everything up to the 12th fret covered. And this final position means that we've got the entire neck covered. So we've learned the chord of C across the entire neck. Now, I'm sure you've seen lessons where you've been advised to learn lots of different variations for things. And of course, learning variations is a great thing. But what I'm trying to do here is show you just how much you can do with one thing and how much you can get out of one simple thing. So we've got an arpeggio, one arpeggio, we've got three notes and we've covered virtually the entire neck. Before I get into using what we've learned to create some great bass lines, I'm going to look at a couple of easy ways for us to learn the few missing notes that haven't been covered by this simple three note chord arpeggio. So going back to the first position, we've got root, third and fifth, and I'm simply going to extend that arpeggio to the octave. So we've got root, third, fifth, octave, or C, E, G, and C. So that's one more note we've learned. Now, I can't do that here, but if I go all the way up to the fourth position, I've got root, third, fifth, an octave, or C, E, G, C. So now we've learned two more notes, C, E, G, C, C, E, G, C, E, G, and C, E, G, C. Now, we've taken that root position arpeggio and we've extended it up to the octave so now we're going to extend it down so we've got root third fifth octave or c e g c we're coming back down and i'm going to play the fifth below the root or g so now we get root third fifth octave and coming down fifth third root an octave or G applying notes to that and again we can't do it in the second or third position but if we come up to the fourth position we can root third fifth octave or C E G C and if we come down there's C the root note and we've got fifth or G below the root this means that there are only three notes that we haven't covered on the entire neck in the chord of C and what I'm going to do now is look at another really easy way of mopping up all those extra notes. And it's also a way that's going to turbocharge your understanding of the chord arpeggio too. What we're going to do now is apply the chord arpeggio to each single string. So apart from helping us learn those three missing notes across the neck, 
it's going to be a really good workout. Now, you can't do this using patterns or shapes, or I certainly couldn't. You, you might be able to, but I mean, I couldn't. And if you applied this same process to every chord you knew, you just simply couldn't do it using patterns or shapes. So it forces us to think about the notes in the chord. So it's going to be a great workout, and it's going to really help reinforce our understanding of the chord. So what we're going to do is we're going to play each chord on each single string, and we're going to play it from the lowest note available to us in each chord right up to the highest. We're going to start on the G string. So the lowest note we've got is G, and then we've got C, and then it's E, and then it's G, and then it's C. Now, if you want to, you can test yourself by saying the note before you play it. G, C, E, G, and C. Or if you want to push yourself even further, you could use the you could use the interval name. So fifth, root, third, fifth, root. And now onto the D string. So the lowest note available to us is E the third. Then we've got G the fifth. Then it's C the root. E the third. Then it's G the fifth. Now the A string. So Nice and easy, because we start with the root note, C. And then we've got E, the third. And then we've got G, the fifth. And then we've got C, the root. And now we've got E, the third. And this is one of the missing notes that we didn't capture before. So we're up at the, oh, the 19th fret of the A string. And I've got to say, I don't think I've ever played this note before in my bass playing lifetime, but I might now. And now on to the E string. We've got open E, the third, G the fifth, C the root, E the third. And this is another one of the missing notes that wasn't captured before. Then we're on to G the fifth, and then finally, C the root. And I'm right up at the 20th fret of the E string. So now we've covered every single note in the chord of C across the whole instrument. Great workout and really good to compound your understanding of the chord. Now, I like to make music out of everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this stuff and I'm going to show you how we can use it to create some really interesting things that you can include in your bass lines. The first thing I'm going to say is there are no rules here. So there's no process to follow and there's no right or wrong way of doing this. The only thing that's up for grabs are the notes in the C major chord across the entire neck. And all I'm going to do is take some of those notes randomly and see if we can come up with something that we might use in the bass line. Now, I'm going to start with something familiar because let's have a, a good starting point. So that's going to be a C octave because it's probably something that we all play every time we pick up the instrument, but we need something to go with that. Alright, okay, so I'm playing G at the 12th fret of the G string and E at the 9th fret and I'm also playing a little ghost note on the G string which you can play if you want. And now I've introduced an open G. And I'm answering that open G with the G here at the 17th fret of the D string. Now we tend to play in a linear fashion as bass players, so if we're going in one direction, it's rare that we suddenly change and play things in very different octaves, but I quite like playing that way, and to an extent this is what I've done. Playing an open G, and then answering it again. So I'm playing that a couple of times just to get comfortable, but we need somewhere else to go. And randomly, I'm going to go for this C on the 15th fret of the A string. I like
like that, but we need something else to go with that. Oh. Right, okay. So, now, I've stolen, I've stolen a note here that's not actually in the chord of C, but bear with me because it works and I like the sound of it. So, we've got C here on the 15th fret of the A string. And then I'm jumping up and playing this A at the 14th fret of the G string, which isn't in the, the chord of C, but I'm sliding down to G, which is the 5th of C. Now I'm at the 12th fret of the G string. And then finally, I'm finishing off with this E, which is the 3rd of C, and I'm at the 14th fret of the D string. Is it slowly? Let's try and play that up to speed if we can. Now that's nice and different, and it's probably not a line that you would even think of playing. I certainly wouldn't, but I'm going to see if I can now incorporate it into a groove that's similar to something that we might play. That's nice. I made a little mistake when I was playing that groove, but I uh, hope you can forgive me that. So that's really nice and I'm going to keep that, but we need another idea. So this time I'm going to start with a little bit of a groove and see if that inspires me to come up with anything. Ooh. Really like that. Whew, right, okay. This is really, really different, and I certainly wouldn't play this way. So I'm playing E at the ninth fret of the G string, and then I'm pulling off and playing an open G, and then I'm playing that G again, plucking that G again. And then I'm playing G here at the 5th fret of the D string. And then I played the open G again. Which is a little bit like playing... Or... And I definitely wouldn't play that line. But I'm keeping this one. But we need something to go with it. All right, okay, so my next target note from the chord is going to be C here at the fifth fret of the G string. So I'm playing E, open G, plug in the open G, playing G on the D string, then playing my open G again, and I'm actually playing a mute note on the D string before I play C at the fifth fret of the G string. And now it would appear that I'm finishing with this E on the A string at the 7th fret. All those notes are in the arpeggio of C, but listen to how different it sounds. It doesn't sound like... at all. Now that's quite tough. I'll play that right this time. So... What I'm going to do now is see if I can incorporate both those ideas, the first idea and the second idea, in the groove. So fingers crossed, here goes.
So we've got a lot of things going on here. We've got some great new, different and exciting ideas that we can use in our bass lines. And they've all come about by following this process. And by doing that, we're reinforcing our understanding of the chord. But more than that, we're really starting to broaden and develop our understanding of the neck too, which is great. There's a workbook for the lesson that I'll post a link to below. It's got everything that I've spoken about and everything that I've played in it too, so make sure you grab that. I'm releasing a new video every week, so feel free to give things the thumbs up and let me know in the comments what you think too. Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification. That way you won't miss out on anything. Thanks for joining me. Look forward to seeing you again. And in the meantime, happy practicing.